Hello mate, welcome back. Here in this video we're going to just do a bit of rendering. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon, that really helps me out. And of course an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons, you guys are legends. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video, as usual. So let's jump into this then. I've already got a scene loaded here and this is... Some of you may recognize these characters from one of my older games. They've been updated, as you can see. Made some big tweaks to this character and this character. Um, the sister character is actually pretty good, so I don't need to tweak that one too much. But in this scene, she's hiding underneath a blanket anyway. So we don't really need to worry about this too much. So what I've got here is a nice simple landscape that's quite well sheltered uh, it will pass as a beach quite nicely and in this game the characters start off um, on a beach they've got their, their worldly possessions in uh, a combination of her rucksack his knapsack there and a trash bag there and uh, that's basically it so that's where we are so essentially what we're looking at here really is going to be looking at angles um, that we can use to tell our narrative to, to assist us with the narrative without overburdening our system and making things slow down. See, realistically, this character is unconscious in this scene, so she's not going to be doing anything. She's going to be pretty much invisible from the neck down. And there are going to be some scenes where we don't really need her character to be displayed at all. For example, if we're shooting from this angle, the blanket's visible, but the character isn't. So we don't actually have to load her into the scene, or rather we can hide her from the render for the sake of just speeding things up a little bit and reducing that geometry memory and the texture memory that's required. So in this scene, these two characters are sitting and they're having a conversation before one of them goes off to look for help or to try and achieve something. So what we need to do is we need to just get some good angles for that and so we want realistically the, the characters to be looking at each other as best we can. So what we can do is we can actually select both of our characters and then off screen I've got a script which I'm going to use just going to make them look at each other. It's um, You can do it manually if you want to, it just takes a little bit of extra time, a couple of minutes. It's not a, uh, a, not a overly strenuous task. So we just double click on that and we just hit accept and now they should look more or less straight at each other. His neck's a little bit strained but it's it's believable. Now we do have some deforce in the scene in her hair and on the blanket but the head movement was fairly insignificant so I'm not going to be, I'm not going to stress myself out about it too much. Realistically what we need to do is line up our camera angles and we need to get as far away from the characters as we possibly can. Um, and this is going to allow us to get some nice detail shots from a distance where there's no distortion so I reckon this will probably work as a good camera angle here. I'm just going to select that and then jump into that camera and adjust our parameters. Just give myself some focal length. Now I have got other other cameras in the scene. They don't actually, I don't actually need them in the scene. They're just uh, cameras that I've used for other shots so I can just delete those and then that's that's fine. In fact, these items here, I can actually just stick those up into the scene there. Just likes to keep. I just like to keep this as decluttered as possible. Now we're going to use the camera angle tool there, so that we can get a good angle on her face, and we need to see kind of the back of his head as well, so that we know that that's what she's looking at. But we don't want this to be a dominant feature in the frame, so we've got to kind of reach a happy medium on that one really so here we go come in nice and tight on the shot there and i'm gonna just nudge this across slightly and then we can come back into perspective view spin it around and now we can put our depth of field on and just close up on here so that we can make sure that we are actually focusing on her and then once the uh, camera wakes up there we go now we can just increase our focal length and as you can see that is a really shallow depth of field that's not going to do us any good so we need that to be a little bit better there well, probably maybe a little bit more but we'll see how that gets on and then if we jump back into our camera we're just going to quickly jump into nvidia iron mode and see how that looks 
So as we can see, the render is starting to take shape. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to control click on this eyeball and this is going to cause it to recalculate, but it just might make things a little quicker by removing her from the scene because she's not even in the shot. There we go. You can see that jumped in much quicker now. There we go. So we can see she's looking at him. She's already she's got kind of a sad expression on her face, which is intentional. He's not too in focus, which is good. We can always shallow up our depth of field if we need to just bring this down to let's say like 250 and see what happens makes things a little bit sharper on her face whilst oh, sorry it makes everything else look blurry in relative to the sharpness of the items looking at her face so that's good so i'm pretty happy with that angle that one works for me so we've got that one tied up we can now go back into our perspective view and now we can start looking at the reciprocal now his eyes look kind of freaky. I'm not going to lie that that's that's going to bug me a little bit. So I think what we need to do is rotate him slightly so that he's not strained quite so much because that's kind of mad. So that will work. Now we have to load, click on both characters again, and then we can run our script again. Just accept. She's going to move her face ever so slightly, but it's not a huge problem. The, sh the camera angle, if we click on camera five, should still be very much focused on her face, which it is. So that's cool. And now he's not looking at her in quite such a weird way. Um, rather than having this sh angle here, so that in both shots, the non-active character is on the left-hand side of the screen, what we can do, and this is a trick that quite often is used in creating this kind of image, is have it on the opposite side of the screen. It's not a hard and fast rule. You don't have to do it this way, but it does add to the effect of having two characters talking to each other a little bit. Now we might have to move this in a moment, but I'm just going to stick this camera here, jump into it from here, and then we're going to have to come right in tight on our focal length. And as you can see, we are not really in the ideal position so we actually need to find our characters where the bloody hell are they gone there they are there they are that's cool so you know there's some weird stuff going on with his eye i don't know there seems to be something that's happening with genesis eight characters at the moment um there you go and now we can come back into our perspective view with the camera selected turn on depth of field and now we can swing our camera around and we can adjust this so that it's focused on his face shouldn't take too much time there we go and just get ourselves a good vantage point so that we can make sure that we are focusing on his eyes pull the uh, focal length back down so that it's roughly in the position where his eyes are and then we can just drag up the depth of field the f-stop a little bit jump back into our camera and now we can just switch back into nvidia iron mode and hopefully this shouldn't take as long to calculate so now we've got that camera angle and i've also fixed the <laughs> pupil problem um if you ever get into a situation where there's something weird happening to your characters like a dimension is out or something like that Generally, it usually means that you might have installed something. Um, content creators sometimes, shall we say, there are some content creators out there who are not all there and they set their properties to be default 100%, which means as soon as you install that morph, then it's applied to all of your characters. This has happened to me in the past before and it's happened to me again in this case. So just go through your currently used morphs and just check that there's not some wacky thing that's been applied to your character so as you can see now we've got the two characters having a conversation we've got two good camera angles there that works so we'll jump back into texture shaded that work like that so happy days now what we need to do is we need to jump out of this camera and then we need to find a kind of a wide shot that's going to work now as, as you can see i've hidden the sister character there so we want a wide shot that's going to show off these two characters having a conversation show off the kind of surroundings but not in a way that's going to make it look weird the fact that she's not visible in the scene and we're doing this to save memory so it doesn't get cpu fallback every time we push out a render so what i want to do is i want to find a camera angle that's realistically going to have to be from 
somewhere over this way so that we can't see her head or rather where her head should be and still going to give us some kind of idea of where we are this one maybe this one will look okay we'll add a camera in here jump into that camera we're gonna have to put in that's the wrong camera camera two now we're gonna have to put in some depth of field otherwise it's gonna look weird if you keep changing between cameras that do and don't have depth of field it kind of it makes the image a little bit jarring so realistically you want to try and keep your photographic style as consistent as possible now i'm gonna probably crop out a little bit more of this stuff only because i don't really see there being much benefit in having all the bump in the background this angle is fairly good but we are going to have to now check our depth of field to make sure it's actually focused on our characters and we want it to be focused on both of their kind of head areas like that that'll work for me and then this one's going to be a little bit blurry and then the plants in the foreground should be very blurred as well so again we'll jump into iro preview mode and see how that looks that doesn't look too bad it's there's a little bit of clipping going on, on her left boob but we can get that sorted in post overall the shot looks pretty good you can see it's just the two of them having a conversation we can do some of the things like we can maybe add some some god rays and things like that in post-production as well realistically so i'm pretty happy with the three angles we've got so far we are going to have to do one shot of this character at least in situ um otherwise it's going to look a bit weird and also it's part of the narrative sooner or later they're going to address um or rather add some exposition that allows you to know why she's unconscious and, um, and that will require us to point the camera at her but for the first three shots i'm pretty happy with the angles that we do and inevitably sooner or later these characters are going to have to move as well they're not going to stay completely rigid in this during the conversation the first three shots are fine but after that that's when we need to look at adjusting our camera for a second shot so that's something to take into consideration for a bit later on so i'm going to push out these renders and see how they look Hope you found that at least a little bit informative, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.